Sweet Shot of Time is sponsored by Promoco RVA. As of July 2021, Virginians can legally possess one ounce of marijuana for recreational use. But where do you get it? Well, you no longer have to schedule sketchy meetups with a dishwasher from Applebee's after a shift at 1 a.m. You can now visit Promoco RVA online, check out their wide variety of products, and schedule a meetup at your convenience between 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday with a professional legal business. Get verified online first, 21 and over only, no kids allowed. Once you get verified, you can log in, order, get points with each order. We love points. If you're in D.C., you can visit their storefront at 1813 18th Street Northwest. But if you're a rich man like me, just go to Promoco RVA. Just Google up Promoco, that's spelled P-R-O-M-O-C-O RVA, and you can schedule services. Please tell them Sweet Shot of Time sent you. Hello there, and welcome to Sweet Child of Time. I'm your host, Steve Barnes, and today we are in a liminal space, and I'm here in that liminal space with my friend James McCollum, a.k.a. the Marshland Monster. Ahoy there, James. Chips ahoy in this. Whoa, you just held up <laughs> Chips ahoy, mini chewy. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> mini chewy, no. Give me big chewy. Chewbacca. <laughs> it worked perfectly for the listening audience. I knew James was going to say Chips Ahoy, so I had a uh-huh. bag of Chips Ahoy ready for us. I almost didn't. I was going to say, and I hope you're not hearing this liminal space because, you know, I don't have any room tone really. Oh, technically, every room has a tone, and if it didn't, you'd go crazy. I know this. <laughs> You're a professional. You know this. And yeah, I say I'm in a liminal space because, um, well, because of one of our listeners, Dylan, Egg- Dylan Eggers. Uh, he listens to the Dark Podcast and he writes in a lot. And he's been writing me recently because he knows we're about to begin Dark Season 3. And he suggested this concept of a liminal space to me. And um, I kind of knew what it was, but the, but the way he described it, I really identified with it. Are you familiar with that term? No, and I just hope it's not a liminal space because lemon makes me puke. Uh, it's a liminal space is like when you're when you've completed one phase, but you have yet to begin the next phase. Mm. So you're kind of like in between space of like you're you're unsure about what's going to come next. So okay. that's where we are right now between season two and season three of Wheel of Time. We're in our liminal space right now. And of course, Lindsay and I are going to be doing dark season three. But then we'll be in our own liminal space after that because we're not sure what the next step is going to be, James. You'll be in double liminal space and you're still in the liminal space between 1899 and 1999. I know you're right. I hope it's not a liminal space. It's an ending. There's a big difference. That thing is just ended. I wish it wasn't. Maybe it'll come back in a comic book. That's what I'm hoping. They did, um, they being the producers of the show and the writers of the show, did mention that they would like to continue the story in another format. And I'm thinking graphic novel would be the best one. Speaking or of other visual form- novel, which is television? <laughs> uh, no, a visual novel. It's a video game that you just oh. kind of talk like it's just a bunch of text and you sometimes make decisions. Okay. Yeah. Like a, um, like one of those choose your own adventure books that I, I read when I was a kid, except it's yeah. in video game format. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I was going to say because of other, um, other mediums, you know, wheel of time is going to switch mediums as well. Season three, I should say is going to supposed to be airing early 2025, <gasps> but oh. also that's going to be happening early 2024 is they're supposed to be releasing an animated movie called the white tower, which is based off of the Aes Sedai supposed to be i mean i'm just guessing because everybody's just speculating what it's going to be about they've announced who the director is and everybody's excited about the director they chose who's like a marvel i think james might be looking it up for me right now who's directing Mm -hmm. that movie um but it it seems like it's going to be based on like an unknown Aes Sedai and just her going from being a novice to an accepted to an Aes Sedai and probably confronting some um Black Aja and some darkness along the way, I'm sure. Just like kind of a side story, um, just happened in parallel of our main story, you know? Did you find out who that director was? I know he's a DC director. 
Yes, Jay Oliva. There you go. Oliva. Oh, look, I had it written down here in my notes, oh, too. No. There you go. <laughs> I I'm forgot l- that I had notes for this episode. <laughs> I'm looking up what other stuff this studio that he works with has done. Because mm-hmm. if it's – there's a specific animation style of the time right now that looks like cell shaded. Yeah, it looks like that might be what to, we're uh, going to be going up against. There's oh, a possibility okay. that I will not like the animation style in this <laughs> movie. Uh, me too, because I don't like animation in general anymore. Oh. I mean, even though like I love stuff like home movies, Bob Burgers, Simpsons, things like that, I'm just – I just don't gravitate to animation whatsoever. I'm just less apt to watch it. Oh, I love them. I mean, I should. There's good stuff out there that is animated. Um, I don't know. I like I like seeing a character's an actor's face and seeing like their different emotions come across it. I don't know. You don't get that in animation. He did do. Uh, oh, he directed Army of Do- Oh Army of Darkness, Las Vegas. Never mind. Uh. He's worked on a lot of uh, of the DC stuff that I enjoy, so there's a chance that I'm I'm going to love this. Did he do Red Hood? If he did Red Hood, I'm going to be like, okay, maybe maybe it's going to be good. No, he didn't, but he that. did uh, The Dark Knight Returns parts one and two. Just a lot of stuff. He he's done some of the really really good animated DC stuff. Which if you are into DC, a lot of people put those the like the animated universe in high regards for these movies Hmm. okay doesn't um nicole watch some dc animated stuff i thought i heard her say she watched um uh what was it uh the female version of the joker who is that oh harley quinn yeah we love harley quinn yeah 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 um this does this guy have anything to do with that no harley quinn that show is in its own separate universe but uh, she also, I mean, also Teen Titans Go, she really likes. And I think this dude worked on art department stuff with Teen Titans Go. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's one that um I remember watching with Caleb that I liked a lot. Yeah. You know, one dude I've seen on Instagram lately, it, remi- it kind of reminded me of you in a roundabout way. Um, our boy Lan, uh, Daniel Henney. Uh, I saw him, uh, I follow all these actors on Instagram from Wheel of Time and from Dark because, you know, they're interesting. There was a post that he did and he was wearing like skinny jeans and he had on like a motorcycle, like a real motorcycle leather jacket, like a tough guy jacket. And he had his hair all quaffed. He looked kind of like 50s style, you know, but he was under this sign that said Hamilton. And, it, you know, it looked like the Hamilton logo, like of the play, you know. Mm-hmm. So my first thought was, oh, wow, he's in Hamilton. I didn't know that. But then I was like, wait, he's not really dressed to like era appropriate for Hamilton. And it turns out he's a model. For Hamilton watches. Oh, so that's it was like one of those advertised posts. So he's like a supermodel, and like some of these pictures, he was like showing off his hunkiness and stuff. So he definitely we've seen land shirtless on Wheel of Time. Oh, so yeah, we know we he have. definitely has like a workout method. James, you have a workout method as well. You follow something called the the One Punch Man. Is that what it's called? Um, workout yes. method. Yeah, so people might not know this, but James is super fit as well. And I'm not super fit. Well, I mean, describe your workout and they'll decide for themselves. Well, I have recently said I need to, I was going to stop at this. The One Punch Man workout is generally 10 kilometers a day running, jogging, walking, whatever. You should probably run it. That's real long to walk. <laughs> then 100 squats, 100 crunches and a hundred push-ups i don't do the push-ups because it hurts my neck i need to someday get weights to be able to curl mm. but mm-hmm. i do i'm currently at 700 percent of it so That's people insane. say uh <laughs> start at the start at like 25 percent and just like work your way up a dude on youtube did all of it and in a month he was like ripped he like he looked great but I don't do the running because of allergies and whatnot. So I do. I, I just kept going. I'm 700 squats, mm-hmm. 700 of those like butt workouts where you you're on all fours, doggy style, oh. and you push your uh, your leg out to like crunch your butt. Yeah, right. Like right. you thrust it out. I do 700 of those, 
or I split it in half. So like combined one leg is doing half of it and the other leg is doing half of it. Then I do that butt workout where you hump the sky when you're laying down. (laughs) I do 700 of those (laughs) and then 700 leg crunches to, to get those cum gutters looking good. But I was going to stop at 700. Right. But I've been reading I've been reading comics every single day because now I work at a comic book store. So Kudos. I started reading which I've had it for maybe 13 years, the like collected volume of Batman Nightfall where Bane shows up and Bane's workout is the same as what I do but a thousand of everything. So I'm like I guess I got to get to the Bane workout. <laughs> Except he does he does arm uh pull-ups. pull-ups. A thousand of those, Jesus. So this leads me to my my big question is like, when do you find time in the day to do all this stuff? At 7.30, I start at 7.00. AM or AM? AM. The person upstairs, they're al- I can hear their alarm go off because it's on vibrate. <laughs> okay. One time it was not their alarm that was vibrating because when oh. it thudded on the floor, it kept vibrating. I was like, someone is masturbating. So... <laughs> I at 730 generally is when I start doing my stretches because the alarm goes off. So that means I'm okay with turning on a podcast in this room. Oh, this is how you listen to so many podcasts too. Because you listen to podcasts while you're doing this. Yeah. Also when I, uh, when I'm using the restroom, when I'm doing dishes, uh, if, if I'm able to have headphones on, I will have a podcast on. So yeah, that's what I do. I, Start working out. It generally takes around an hour to like an hour and 10. But I'm also sometimes I'll be posting TikToks of <laughs> my like multitasking. Stuff. Jesus, yeah. look at you, man. I yeah, have often, to. I mean, I've often wondered because um, when I first started podcasting with you, I remember being a listener of your podcast. You would always say how you got up so early in the mornings. Mm-hmm. But then I gathered that Nicole slept late. Oh, yeah. And then you would talk about how productive you were in the mornings. And I was like, oh, me too. So when we podcast together, let's do it in the mornings because that's when we're at our most productive. I see now that you have a different level of productivity than I do when you're actually out there working your body. You're doing the right thing, man. Yeah. So from 6 to 7.30, I'm doing music, editing, podcasts, all of that. And then once 7.30 hits, that's when I start working out. Then I make Nicole's food. And then because Nicole's alarm goes off around like nine, but she never wakes up at nine. So I have to then uh, like even if she wakes up at nine fifteen, I want to make sure all of her food is done and my food is done. Right. So then we can eat right away because after doing 700 of all these workouts, I'm (laughs) hungry. 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 Hell yeah. (laughs) And nowadays you're um, you're doing this and then you're um, trotting off to uh, the comic store after this. Right. Yeah, so awesome. I, I, only, I like that. I, I only got one s- schedule. So hey, everyone, go to patreon.com forward slash MLM pod because I only was scheduled once in November. So fingers crossed, I I can. Someone says, "Oh, hey, can someone pick up a shift?" Because I'll pick up that shift. Heck yeah, pick it up. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for going over all that with me because I, your workout that is because I've always been kind of curious like when you have time to do all that, and I'm surprised that you can do that min- much stuff in like that short amount of time, like that many, um, crunches, etc. Well, the I, crunches I just, are the, uh, mm-hmm. so usually everything of, in the workout takes about 10 minutes. I just, I do wow. s- just squats for an entire 10 minutes. I don't stop. And then, <laughs> don't stop. uh, and they're wide squats guys. You gotta get <laughs> that. That really gets the, I almost don't have a thigh gap because of just muscle. Okay. And uh, yeah, you, you do that. The, it, everything takes about 10 minutes, but then the crunches, but oh, because I also plank and do the, like those things where you're like bicycling on the ground, but also a crunch. <laughs> I'm doing right. the motion. Steve can see it. I do yes. that. I do like 40 of those because it's like during the, uh, you know, 700 of those just to like get another workout in. And I'm just trying to escalate that more and more each month. So hopefully, eventually, I do 40, and then I do another 40. So eventually, I'll get up to 100. And then eventually, I'll get up to 200. And then I plank for like, uh, I don't know, two minutes, twice. All right. Well, for me, like a couple years ago, I got on a real kick as well. 
Um, and it was for, <laughs> it wasn't even because I was trying to be healthy or trying to lose weight, even though I always, you know, want to look good and want to lose weight, but mm-hmm. you know, you don't always have that, um, that impetus to do so, but I was finding myself, um, taking Charlotte to the skate rink. This is before she could drive. And then I would have like two hours to kill. Mm-hmm. And most of the parents would just sit in the skate rink and look at their phones. And, you know, I did that too, or would read. I read a lot of wheel of time at that time, but eventually I just, I did not like being inside that skate rink. Oh yeah. Um, so I started, you know, walking and then I started jogging and then that's what I just did all the time is for like an hour and a half to two hours, I would be walking or jogging around Ashland and it just, it worked out perfectly because I wasn't really like <laughs> doing it to be healthy. I was just killing time. And I was listening, like listening to podcasts while I did it as well, or listening mm-hmm. to good music. Now Charlotte drives herself uh, to skating all the time. So I don't have that like extra time to kill anymore. So if I want to do that, I have to find the time to do that. So Heather and myself uh, decided a couple months ago, we were going to start waking up and first thing James style, uh, going to crunch fitness, a gym place. that's like maybe five minutes or less <laughs> from our house. And we did that about six times, maybe less. And it was awful. It was just not, it's not the right time for me to work out. Like when mm-hmm. I first wake up, um, and then like coming home sweaty and then change it into work clothes. It just, it just didn't work out for me. So in, um, in response to you and your great workout, what I did right before this podcast was I canceled that crunch membership. Mm. So, so no more of that for me. I'll hopefully just get my exercise through yard work and things like that, but we're not in the same place, James. I'm sorry to say. I would say instead of waking up and like first thing you do is go to that gym. Also, mm-hmm. if it only takes five, a five minute drive, how long would it do to walk there? Oh, good. Good question. Probably 20. Oh, wait. Yeah. Also, this isn't city driving. I'm assuming I'm like, yeah, you want to because if a five minute drive in like Muskegon is miles, (laughs) yeah, it's it's a distance. (laughs) Whereas five minutes here in the city is maybe a quarter of a mile. Right. Yep. So, so yeah, in this yeah. case, it would, it would take about 20 minutes to walk there, so I suppose. You could walk 20 minutes, and then you're like, hey, I'm up. I, I'm i ready to do this instead of like, wake up, put on stuff. You're still groggy. And also, oh, you get that fresh air in your nose. That's what I would have recommended. Or just mm-hmm. do the exercise in your home. Yeah, that's kind of the route we should go. We also have a dog that loves to be exercised as well. So that should go hand Mm. in hand, just walking the dog. And I've kind of gotten out of the habit of doing that as much as I should. So I need to get walking that dog like a yo-yo master. That's right. You did the yo-yo motion. Hey, I'm a yo-yo guy too. I can make that sucker sleep. That's the basis. That's like the ollie of the yo-yo is making it sleep. Because if you want to learn tricks on a skateboard, first you have to learn how to ollie, and then all the tricks build off of that. On a yo-yo, the same thing, right? I learned how to impossible first. Oh, of course you did. Of course you did, James. (laughs) (laughs) You you Muskegon skateboarders, I know. Um, I guess I'm going to transfer to some Wheel of Time talk, James. Yeah. And the first thing I wanted to talk about... Let's just start with some uh, some season three news that we know that's coming up for season three. Uh, if you remember back in season one, do you remember those two often that uh, Parent hooked up with? And we had Isla was the mom who was also that that um, Maria Doyle Kennedy, that cool singer. Uh, yes. Dad was Rain, and then Aram was a super handsome grandson, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're all going to be back for season three. Uh, the last we saw of them, if you remember, was when Perrin and Egwene got captured by the White Cloaks. They they were they were roughing up Isla. Like remember, like that one child Valda slapped her, and they started beating them up. And then they grabbed Perrin and Egwene. Well, I guess they just let the uh, Tuathan go at that point because they're used to getting beat up by the White Cloaks. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a nor- just an everyday occurrence. So we're, we have to catch up with those guys again, which is cool. We're also going to catch up with the Gwaine's mom. Um, she got recast for season three, a different person, but in the same role. Mm-hmm. Um, a Gwaine's mom in the first season ran the inn, and her big moment to me was when, like, in episode one of season one, 
she stood up and was like, hey, everybody, let's all drink and party. Oh, and everybody yeah. went, woohoo. That's a great mom. <laughs> when you said Egwene's mom, I'm like, did we meet her? <laughs> they didn't really introduce her as Egwene's mom, but you have to mm. pay attention to the cast to, to be able to know that. Uh, yeah, something I noticed, speaking of Egwene, this is like looking back to a little bit of some Wheel of Time uh, season one stuff. Also happening in season one, episode one with Egwene was her braid. They braided her hair, the women's circle, and they made a huge deal about that. And then the last episode that we watched, uh, episode eight, season two, she got that braid chopped off by uh, the evil Rena. Yeah, so that had even more significance than we realized. Just misunderstood, not evil. <laughs> That's right. Yes, and yes, season two, episode eight. That was the last podcast we did together. Um, for the listeners, that was just last week. But for you and I, that was about three weeks ago that we recorded that. Um, I, I heard that that was... Uh, so someone told me it was not my best episode. <laughs> it's the words they chose. So right, I'm, what happened? I, I, I just I was just awkward and fumbly for words, and I think oh. I was uh maybe seemed insincere at some points during the episode. I guess um, was but, you know yeah. Was this person your wife? Yeah, I might be in love with this person that said that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there might be a reason I took it to heart. But I want every episode to be the best episode. So I'm I'm striving to be better, James. Oh, but Perrin's shield. That's the other thing. Next thing I had written down here to look back on. If I didn't remember this, somebody in the Facebook group had to make me remember this. But I think it was around season two, episode three, and Egwene, Elaine, and Nynaeve were sitting around reading letters from Perrin. Do you remember when Perrin was writing letters to them in the White Tower? Yes. Okay. One of the things he wrote in the letter was about the Shi'ar and shields. And he talked about how the shields, you know, one shield is, is fine, but like a whole bunch of people can shield each other. And he was like, shields mean so much to me. All us from two rivers, we shield each other. We love shields. And then that's what he gets. He gets a magical shield in the last episode from Uno. And I think that's going to be like his magical object. And Rand I didn't realize it had that tie in. Hmm? Rand gets one too. What do you mean? Does he? Yeah, he got magically shielded. Oh, that's right. <laughs> we didn't like that shield, though. That was a bad shield. Nah, I was for it. <laughs> yeah, Let's get right. a you new were, dragon. You like lean dark friends sometimes, and I don't blame you like like learning about Lanfear this past season. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's so cool. I know, she is. But um, maybe because so she's no longer a dark friend. <sighs> I don't know. I mean, I kind of think she's still going to be leaning in that direction. I, it, I mean, it's hard to speculate because this it's all new and it's not like she, um, it, it's all different from the books. So I'm speculating. I'm not hiding anything from you. Um, it does absolutely seem like she's on the side of the light, but I don't know. I think that's only uh, happenstantial because she's in love with Rand. If it wasn't for that, she'd be like, fuck the light. She's neutral. She is on the side of the dragon. Not it the light, like not it. the dark. Well, she's supposed to be on the side of the dark. That's what she's sworn to be. And she's like immortal and all that stuff. Well, I once swore to God that uh, <laughs> uh, that I would never <laughs> masturbate if like a specific thing happened when I was like 13 years old. And guess what? Yeah. Oath broken. Oh, my. You're an oath breaker. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. You're the worst of the worst, James. Some other oath breakers are dark friends, and that's something I wanted to ask you about. Do you remember the uh, little dark friend social where they had the round table and they were sitting around it, and there was thirteen people in that room? So we know who some of those people are. We know Barthanes was there. Who Barthanes is Moraine's nephew. Uh, mm -hmm. Leandrin was there, obviously. Lady Suroth with her long ass fingernails was there. Mm -hmm. Pad and Fain was there. He didn't even bother to wear a cloak, so he was definitely there. And then we saw a Shinarin there, too, a Shinarin soldier. And I'm thinking that was probably Ingtar, because even though it, you know, happened um, off show, he was a dark friend, it turned out. And they confirmed mm -hmm. that, like, they filmed scenes with him being a dark friend, but they just never aired them for um, season two. But that only gives us one, two, three, four, five. So that means there are seven more 
uh, dark friends in there. And there's a few clues that we saw. We saw somebody that was dressed in white. Uh, we saw somebody in Tuathan garb. So I wanted to kick it to you now. We have seven people out there that are dark friends that are in our show. Do you have any idea who they might be or any guesses who they might be? And I want to write this down. It's probably just Madrox the multiple man seven times. <laughs> of course. Well, it's obvious, dude. Who the hell is Madrox the multiple man? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, it's an X-Men character <laughs> okay. that he, he can like make multiples of himself. Oh, funny. I don't know that because I am. I think of myself as an X-Men um, expert, but of course I haven't read anything past 1993. He could also be like in an uncanny first appearance was in uh, 1975. Oh, he was part of X Factor. So like in the I X family. Should, oh, I know who you're talking about now. Yes, X Factor. I loved X Factor. But anyway, we of the time world, though, who do you suspect? I mean, you don't have to name seven people, of course. But I mean, um, any characters you think that might be on the dark side? The voice... Of the the Amarillan seat. Oh yeah, that's right. Her name is uh, Leanne. Yes, I think her. And then you said a Tuathan. Who's those are the? Yeah, the um. Well, the travelers, quote unquote, tinkers, the travelers. Yes. Man, I wonder if it's someone we've already met. Me too. I don't know either. <laughs> And I think if it is, it's probably the younger one that they were really communicating with. Uh, you mean the guy? Yeah. Aram. That's his name. Uh, that's okay. I'm going to guess him. There's got to be a two river dude in there that we've met. Like Seems maybe. Like may, no, because that person, I'm trying to think of people who would have power in two rivers because why would you just get. I don't want it to be the you Gleeman, got- even though. It, it, oh wait, no, I did. I did suspect that it was the Gleeman. Could have been you a did, dark friend. But I mean, you can also take that back. But I mean, you did at one point. You want to know if the Gleeman's one of them? That's Tom Marilyn. And who? I'll else? name some two. Ri- there's the two rivers people that we know are like um, the ladies from the uh, the cir- the women's circle. There was. It's got to be one of them. Or okay. no, you want to know it. It might be a Gwen's mom because if they're sure. making a to do to recast and have something, it's it's probably someone along those lines. Uh, could it have been Perrin's wife from the afterlife? I it could have been. I mean, she's dead now though, so that's kind of um, a moot point. She died yeah, in episode oh. one too. Yeah, so she wouldn't it, be that. She wouldn't even been around that that table. The dark. But could circle. They, you can't be ghosts in the dream world? <laughs> uh, Let's say no. It doesn't. Okay. No, it does not work that way. No, it does not. But that's a, that raises a good point. That's how Ishmael finds all these people. He finds people like you wouldn't suspect like an Aiel of being a dark friend because how could they be? You know, mm-hmm. they can't communicate with anybody besides other Aiel. But Ishmael recruits people in their dreams, and that's how he communicates with them. Yeah. So yeah, so, that's a good that's a good solid three. I mean, four right there. You got Leanne, Aram, Tom, Marilyn, and Egwene's mom. So I think that's a pretty solid guessing. And I was thinking other people like Matt's mom, perhaps, because she's I, kind of out of pocket all the time. That, but I think she's too, uh, like, she's not focused at all. And when it comes to the two rivers, the two rivers is a small town. But in a small town, what is the greatest position to have in this situation. It's oh, the a person. What? I was going to say a mayor or an innkeeper. Yeah. Yes. So yes, the innkeeper is Egwene's mom, correct? Yep. That's right. Yeah. So uh, yeah, the, it feels if they're going to have someone in the two rivers, it would be that. I don't think it would be Matt's mom because she's, she's a drunk, right? That's right. Yeah. It just not, not to like diminish that, but I feel <laughs> could be a reason she's a drunk. <laughs> oh, that could be too. Or it's all I a was, show. And then we can't, um, look past the person that was in white. So it, I'm thinking that's definitely a white cloak. And my number one suspect is child Valda, of course, cause he's just, he just sucks in general. And he's like openly killing Aes Sedai as well. He's killed like six Aes Sedai. Yeah. But he's so for the light. But that could be a, like a showy a thing. Yeah. 
I guess I and don't it, suspect um the young born hall, the guy who um you know gave gave Perrin the beer. Um mm-hmm. I don't suspect him of being a dark friend, but maybe that maybe that's by design. Maybe he seems cool for a reason. Uh, his dad is dead, but his dad still could have been the dark friend. I was gonna bring that up. It could be that, and then when we see the next circle, there's a little bit less. <laughs> yeah, but there probably will be. The son doing that, it would make actually a lot of sense why he would help out Perrin. How so? Think because that he wants Perrin to live he wants Perrin to survive because the dark he would know by order of the dark one hey keep an eye on this fucker and right. then he's like oh okay yeah I still love my dad but now he might be like hey dark one I'm kind of pissed off at you because okay. he he killed my dad what was the plan there <laughs> yeah okay so, so yes so which which one you want to put on the list then the young or the old well, not the old. I think it's either Child Valda or mm-hmm. the old, the young one. Okay, Bornhold is his name. Bornhold is his name. And then, were there any other descriptors that we might have? Nope. That's all seen? I could glean. That's all I could glean because glean they should. You, you can see the people that were obviously uh, Leandrin and Suroth and mm-hmm. um, the Shiaran, so they're already spoken for. All right. Well, yeah. But yeah, I wanted to move on to another spot and this is, um, I have like some planned spoilers I was going to give you like things that, um, are in the books, but I think it's pretty clear they're not going to be in the show. Okay. So I just wanted to discuss a couple of those things with you. Um, season two, we were introduced to two women. One of them was, uh, Viren, the, the brown Aes Sedai. And then her friend, her name escapes me, but she was the one that was horny for land and kept making land jokes. Do you remember that? Yes. Uh, Adelis. That's what her name was. Um, Adelis Sedai. And between the two of them, they had one warder and he was a long haired old dude named Thomas. Um, and he's still kind of like one of our pals. He's, he mm-hmm. was in the last episode. Um, so what I wanted to spoil, uh, not really though, is in the book that wasn't Thomas. That was a guy named Jane. He was he was like um, Adelis's, I think. Uh, these warder. dang, these dang <laughs> fantasy names. Hey, it's it's James. No, no, no. Just drop the S. That's what I wanted to go into with you. Like I saw this guy's name, Jane, and I'm like, okay, that that makes sense. That's like the singular version of of James. And then I was thinking about James. It's like. It ends in an S, so you think it's plural. And I was thinking about other names like that. And I could think of like Charles, which is also like a royal, like James is a a name of royalty, by the way. And then there's Charles, also a royalty name. I really couldn't think of any other names that end with an S, like especially guy names. What's that? Lewis. Yeah, well, I started thinking more, Dennis, Lewis. And then I decided to like look it up. I was like, I wonder how many guys, because it seems uncommon. It seems weird for like a name to be plural and end in an S. There's 1,800 male names that end in an S. Dang. I had no idea. <laughs> so you're in good company, James. Did you know James means a Caesar of power? <laughs> I did, because somebody taught me that in the most recent episode of um, Engage with Nicolas Cage. That was me. That's right. And I don't think you guys have ever no, ever talked about this. I don't remember you guys discussing this. But Nicole is just simply the feminine version of Nicholas. Yeah. So she's like Nicole Cage, basically. Oh, like, dang. You're right. Yeah. So, like, I've, I don't think y'all have ever, like, made that um, revelation before. But I'm here for you, James. I, I did, No, <laughs> Nicholas Cage, get out of here. <laughs> You're not marrying Nicole. Nicole's not even marrying me. <laughs> um, I was thinking about my first roommate when I first moved out. I was only 17 when I first moved out. I moved in with my friend Deborah, who I worked with at a sub shop. And she was obsessed with two men being David Bowie and Nicolas Cage. So like everything in our house was David Bowie or Nicolas Cage. So that's Hell one yeah. of the reasons I'm a fan of that podcast of y'all. 
y'all's because all those early Nicolas Cage movies I've seen multiple times. Mm -hmm. When y'all started getting up to stuff in like the late nineties, I kind of lost, you know, lost focus because I don't know those movies as much, but yeah, she, she totally got me into Nicolas Cage. Hey, you changed uh, scenery on me here. What's this? Uh, James disappeared as well. This is a really mysterious episode. Like we have appearing and disappearing co-hosts. You could have just is, not commented what is happening? on that. I w- <laughs> you you, you could have just left it. I needed to let butter out and I'm not wearing pants. So that's why I moved the camera. Anytime a cat comes up, I want to leave it in. Anytime you're not wearing pants, I want to leave it in. Okay. <laughs> I want to leave it in, James. Oh, yeah. Leave it in. Let it soak as the Mormons <laughs> do. All right. The next subject I have to go into with you, James, is uh, I was discussing this with Heather earlier. So you told me, you pointed me to an article that was talking about Rand's five loves. And yes. I remember me being like, that doesn't make sense. I only remember four. So the reason there's five is because they included Celine slash Lanfear in mm-hmm. that list. So number five is Lanfear. Number one, Egwene. Oh, yeah. There's three more. Three more women that find themselves in the Randall Thor bone zone. We've already met them all. Whoa. Who do you think they are? Egwene's mom, <laughs> the Gleeman, and uh, Child's Tyler. We've Not already met. Who do you think? Yeah, you've already met all three of these individuals. So, well, it's um, for sure Redhead Lady. Redhead Lady. You uh, mean the one that we just met, Elaine? Elaine. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to guess Elaine. Because he's like, oh, and who? Oh, that are was a you? super meat. Yeah, that's right. They made that pretty, uh, pretty blatant, like the way they met. Mm-hmm. It's either that or their cousins or something, or twins. Yeah, it could they could be twins? We don't know. <laughs> I love that theory. The pelican woman who died in, or not pelican woman, the Aiel who died and she was pregnant. Probably her. That's uh, his mom. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Rand's boning his mom. Okay, so I have three so far. Yes. Then there, there's got to be another I said die because those are mainly the people we've met. But who? Wait, could no? Boom. It can't. It, it it can't be uh the seer. Why not? All right, I'll guess the seer. So this is the, the same person you were guessing was a dark friend as well, right? No. Well, who's the seer then? Who she can see, see in the future. Oh, um, the bartenderess that was Matt's buddy, Min. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. I'll say Min, and uh, I gotta go. You know, Mm-mm. you gotta go. Egwene's mom. No, <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's not a bad guess because she's going to be showing up in season three. Hmm. And Rand is, you know, more powerful than ever. So, you know, more fit for an older lady. I can't, uh, maybe, no, they, one of the Aiel women that Perrin met. One of them for sure not. Because remember, um, she mentioned. um, The one who's horny. Yeah, the, the. Okay, let me let me figure there's, I got the I got the notes right here. There's one who isn't horny and there's one who is horny. I'm going whoever the horny one okay. is. Gotcha. Either Bane or Chiad, or maybe both Bane and Chiad. Maybe they can talk each other into stuff. No, we're not saying that. <laughs> Solid guesses. Okay, I like that. Oh, an honorable mention, probably a Gwen's mom. <laughs> Always a Gwen's mom. <laughs> All right, now, James, to send us home here, I only have one more thing I wanted to go over with you before we uh, we do our outro here, okay? If you're willing to, I want us to think of, I want us to have a pretend scenario where I was thinking for you a pretty good scenario because I was looking at a map and I was looking at, um, I saw Chicago on a map and I was wondering to myself, like, how how easy would it be to get to Muskegon, like, by water? really easy you just go right across whatever body of water that is right there what body of water is that 
Lake Michigan, one of the five right. great lakes that make the shape of what? The mitten? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I'm just saluting the Great Lakes because I'm so happy. But okay, you have to, you are in Chicago, you and Nicole. All of a sudden, Ishmael shows up in Nicole's dreams and he snatches her to Muskegon. You got to get there as quickly as possible. And once you get there, you actually have to like rescue her too. So you, it's not just a matter of traveling. You actually have to, you know, battle Ishmael when you get there. Mm -hmm. Same situation is happening with me. So I'm over here in Virginia and I got to scoot up to Chesapeake Bay, which is the exact same distance because Ishmael has grabbed Heather and taken her up that way. So I need four people from the Wheel of Time universe to help me too. So we have to decide which four go with you, which four go with me. And we can each have one, um, one, what do you call it? One trade, one trade allowed. That's it. And I'm going to let you go first, James. Who are you going to take with you to rescue Nicole? Okay, so, oh, I thought the you started out with, oh, yeah, and you just go straight across the water. I thought it was going to be, how would you get there? Not, okay, <laughs> no, who would you show up with? Well, I'm thinking, first off, you can get a, could you, like, get a boat and do that? Like, if you, you so desire to do that? Yes, it would take, you would need a pretty hefty boat, mainly because of the gas. You would need, like, extra gas on there or just a large tank. Nicole's oh. mother and I recently over the summer discussed this because okay. we were we were like, oh, could you see? We were on Navy Pier looking and we're like, oh, could we see Muskegon? You can't. But <laughs> uh, what was the question? Oh, yes, you could. You could do that. And how long would it take? I don't know. It would probably take a, just as long as driving, maybe. Because driving's three and a half hours. It's yes. like the exact same distance from me to Shinkatig. But um, we could, oh, wait, a flight is only an hour and 50 minutes from Chicago to Muskegon. Oh, wait, no, that's Muskegon. I'm going to still say it's an hour and 50 minutes. Just drive, okay. guys. No, I, I think I want you, you and your four characters from the Wheel of Time you're taking with you are, are getting on a nice big boat and it has plenty okay. of gas. And you're going to speed across Lake Michigan to uh, Muskegon. So who, which four are you going to take? And then I got to take four as well. So we're going one at a time here. Okay. And I go first. Yes. Cause I'm polite like that. Well, I'd probably, because like, she's so good. Oh man, I cannot find her. I was going to make, no, I can find this. I can find this. <laughs> okay. I, because I know she's good at like water magic and like really just hitting hard. It would be good. Like Erwin. Erwin? Yeah. You know, from Lord of the Rings. No, we're doing Wheel of Time characters, buddy. Dang you it. Can't go, you can't slip go that outside. One you can't go to that, that section over there. Come back over to this section. Okay. Well, first I got to think, who would Nicole want to be hanging out with as, as it just ends. Right. Cause I have a specific person that I'm thinking about that I want to hang with as well. That's going to be my okay. first choice. Yes. We really, really love Ninja steel. So we got to <laughs> go with Nynaeve. Nynaeve. Okay. That's a solid choice. We'd be like, you look so much like this person from this show, Ninja steel. <laughs> and she'd be like a show. What? <laughs> I'm not going to steal Nynaeve from you, though, because whether or not she can do magic is hit or miss. Uh, I mean, she's handy when it comes to practical stuff. That's true. And she's, a you know, a, definitely a great fighter. I'm um, for the same reason, though, not because he's um, great with magic or anything, but um, I'm going with Matt. He's a regular hero of the horn now. Ooh. And plus, he's got that like luck on his side. So we could really use that luck. And plus, he's funny. Remember, Next we get up. one steal each if we need, if we want. Oh, I'm not going to steal anything. Next up. Oh. Who's the, like, coolest dude ever? And Muskegon, full of fo foliage. Okay. I'm going our best friend, O'Gear. Ah. Royal. Hell yeah. That's a great choice. Now, are you thinking about what you're going to do when you get there, too, though? You're getting there, and you're going to have to face Ishmael and rescue Nicole. So don't forget that small fact. And because oh, yeah. of that, I'm going to take with Matt, I'm going to take one of his close buddies, Egwene, because she can work some magic in between her and Matt. They can make something happen. 
You know, I was th- now that I'm thinking about it, I kind of want to scrap everyone and just find people <laughs> who are susceptible to uh, joining the dark one. So then it's like, oh, well, Nicole and I are good. We're just going to get out of here. <laughs> well, I don't know. You got pretty solid choices here. I mean, there are there could be dark friend ogiers. They, they, they could exist. But not naive. She's not going to the dark side. Nah, definitely not. But yeah, let, let's stick with the original. Well, you can start doing dark friends now because maybe if you get some get two strong dark friends in your queue here, then uh, they can turn the other two. Well, Nicole loves her. I love her. She's the dark one's best friend, but Rand's best lady. It's Lanfear. There we go. I forgot her name, so I <laughs> pointed at Steve. All righty. Uh, let's see. We got Matt. We got Egwene. Because we got Matt and Egwene, I'm going to choose Matt's best buddy, Mr. Rand. Because no. he's the most powerful dude around. And as long as he's got Matt and Egwene by his side, he can do no wrong. Okay, well, I already know because I th- th- I want to not have to scream everyone's name. I want to be able to combine <laughs> everyone's name. Elaine Fear. I can just have Elaine and kind of combine their names. I realize that it's not Elan because I was going to say Elan fear. And no, she's Elaine's, cool. That's a strong, that's a strong choice. That's your team right here. You got a, you got a lady friendly team here. Three oh, ladies and, and one Ogier. Hmm? And with Elaine, we, we could really cyber bully Lord online because she is Royal. <laughs> Well, I hate to do this to you, James. You said you're not going to steal, but I do have to steal because I had a definite team in mind, and one of my team members is Lanfear. So I'm taking Lanfear from you because her and Rand are unstoppable. So because of that, I stole from James. That's my team here. And actually, me and Heather have already uh, pre-discussed this, and this is mostly like her like talking me into these individuals, but... This team is strong. I got here. So you got an empty slot. You need to get somebody back on your team, James. Yeah, I'm stealing land fear. God damn it. Fuck. Eat me, dude. <laughs> Why would you do you, Of course, no matter who you stole I didn't even think that was an reason, option you could do that. Yeah, of course it is. That's why you wait to steal. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, I did. I did. And it didn't work I out did, for me. I did. <laughs> you saw this pussy cat. All right, so instead of, I mean, this is the last move, so I'm taking Moraine. She's like the next strongest person, so Moraine is going with me. She's going to, you know, make Matt and Rand and Egwene do her wishes, but I still think I have a strong team, but we both do. I think think we're both going to do this. I think we'll both succeed in rescuing our ladies. Wait, oh, it's, did I do four? Yeah, you did, you got Nynaeve, Loyal, Lanfear, and Elaine. Oh, okay. I thought it was. I thought I was selecting five, but I'm the fifth because then I would have You're picked. I would have picked Lan because Lan can uh, uh, train us. He's good. Yeah, that would have been that would have been a strong fifth pick because with me having Moraine, I of course would want Lan, but now I can't steal because mm-hmm. there's no stealing allowed. So I have to choose somebody else, and in which case I would probably choose Swan just because she's another strong Aes Sedai, and mm. she and Moraine have that have that bond together. So. Yeah, we should have just chose her. <laughs> but all the, all the politics, you know? Yeah. But James, that's all I got for you today. I wanted to um ask you, because we're going to be doing Dark for like the next eight or nine weeks, but uh, can we check in with you maybe every couple weeks after we finish our Dark series? Maybe every three weeks. That's fine with me. I, I, I'd love to check in anytime I can. There's always Wheel of Time stuff like popping off. Like we just found out recently a couple more actors that are um, that got cast this weekend that got announced that I don't have written down, but we can discuss that maybe next time we talk. Mm-hmm. And if um, I can yeah. and mm-hmm. if I can get all the comic books, there's I think 35 ish of them. So yes. I could read that all those in 35 days. Yeah. And you'll be I mean, it's you'll be retreading some stuff you already know, but you'll also, you know, be knee deep in cool, you know, in world lore and learning new characters. And I don't know. I'd love to talk to you about that if it happens. It's great. Hell yeah, brother. So you got any plugs this week, James? Guys, just listen to my music under Marshland Monster. Just put out Anal Dentata with Steven over here. He did a remix of it. And 
in November on the 10th, Rainy Beach Town is releasing. It's Ooh. just a bunch of chill drum and bass stuff. I really enjoy it. Think drum and bass mixed with the chill Kirby songs, and you got what it what the sounds like. Nice. Okay. Uh, for me, I'm just over here kicking it sweet shot of time. I'm releasing things under the name Intro Void quite a bit. Um, check out my Intro Void on Spotify, and check us out on Instagram, Sweet Shot of Time Pod. Uh, write us at sweetshotoftimepod at gmail.com if you care to. And James, until next week. Oh, I have another um, outro. I learned a German word. It's a German word for just of casual goodbye. Like if you're saying bye, see ya, you would say shoes, like the shoes on your feet. So James, may you always find water and shade and shoes. All right. Yeah. All right. I found some shoes right here. Gonna All put right. them up your ass, baby. Oh, bye-bye. <laughs> Bye.